Hello, everybody. And this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. This is Paul Angel. He is an accountability coach and he works and he's affiliated with law also. He is part of our podcast community and he has his own podcast on The Advisor. So you can go to his podcast and listen to all of his different podcasts. He has great ideas and he's an expert when it comes to accountability, when it comes to achieving success. And today he wants to talk about the three S's through uh, to help you reach accountability success. And I'm very excited, Paul, that you're on the show today. And, you know, tell people, you know, a little about yourself and, and you know, how to find that accountability through through three S's. It's actually the three M's, but... <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm not a problem. I'm not too married to them, but it's, it's <laughs> oh, just an easy way for me to kind of remember them, but... I um I I help business owners grow their businesses and usually I make them kind of stop and back up and look at their business and there's some structural foundational stuff that while it might be there it might not be complete or it might be missing so I I regardless of what they tell me I always want to kind of look I want to look under the hood I want to find out do we have a business plan is it comprehensive does it address all the parts of the business is it well thought out? But most importantly, does it tie in with the ownership's goals? Right. And if it does, do those goals track with the owner's mission and vision and values? Because when when you don't have that kind of alignment at your foundation, it doesn't matter what you put on top of it. It's going to not work. And, and or if it works, it's dumb luck and it's in spite of all that. But <laughs> Usually, and I mean, I've I've gone back and stepped in and been happy with what I found as far as the foundation, but more right. often than not, there's there's things that are missing. There's things that can improve, and it's not things you have to go out and get or buy. They're they're internal. They're within you. It's just yeah. put, figuring out what they are, being honest about it, and acting that way. And that's that's really really what's important about success because in order to be successful you have to know why you're doing it you've got to know you've got to be able to find motivation because every day is not going to be perfect um and you've got to figure out how to be held accountable mm -hmm. it, it, you just do i mean until you i mean I, I say three m's my three m's are mindset motivation and mastery and and mastery is that i don't know that enlightened space where we don't need someone else to hold us accountable when we don't yeah. we we've reached that that level of awareness um although i would argue that level of awareness just means it's time to stretch yourself a little more yeah as soon as you get comfortable you can't grow right but that's so, what it is it's basically mindset motivation and mastery so with mindset like, what's the first step? Like, when you break, break break it down to the three M's and someone wants to really grow and they want to succeed, what type of mindset should they have? What, how should they start to change their mindset and their train of thought to be able to start to get on the right track so they could actually build a successful business? Well, I don't like the, the idea that there's a right or a wrong mindset. You, you have one, right? You, right. Um, sometimes it's about accepting what it is. It's about learning to cohabitate with your mindset, or it's it's about right. learning, learning what what it is and what that mindset could end up doing to your plans if you don't make accommodations. But everyone's got one. It's like an opinion, right? But anyone and everyone can and should always be working on their mindset. Um, if someone thinks their mindset is good and they no longer need to work on it, I would argue that that itself might be a mindset issue. Yeah, uh, but I but I'm growth minded. I I'm what in whatever form I I want things to grow. I I don't because I feel if you're not if you're if you're you're either living or you're dying. You're either growing or you're shrinking. I want to grow. I'm all about that. But I think about fitness models and bodybuilders. These people who have these perfect physiques. Yes, they don't need motivation to go to watch their nutrition and their, their food intake or what they're eating. And they don't need someone to wake them up and make sure they go to the gym and exercise. 
they right. kind of reached that mastery, but they didn't get there and say, okay, cool. I don't have to go to the gym anymore. I remember I, I went with a friend of mine to the gym and he obviously hadn't been exercising in a long, long time. And mm -hmm. these three meatheads walk in. I mean, these giant, bowed up, gorilla looking guys. <laughs> it's like, why the hell are they here? They're finished. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not how it works. You don't stop. In fact, I would argue that those people probably exercise way more than the people who are needing the exercise um, right. for health reasons, but they, they don't stop. The, um, but there's a lot of mindset issues. I mean, there's mindset issues around self-doubt and negative talk. I run into mm -hmm. those all the time. I mean, that's that's your limited beliefs, your procrastination, or your or, um, like you're building resistance. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm one of those men who has a wife, and my wife, like most wives, needs seventy five percent of our available closet space. <laughs> I mean, that, that's that's not crazy. That's normal. Um, so I've got to adjust to some space limitations and. I kind of had to create a, a way around it when there's right. limitations like that. Um, there's I there's zero limits on what I can personally add to my wardrobe, mm -hmm. with the possible exception of that disaster in 2016 where I thought I should start wearing skinny jeans. Um, mm -hmm. There's no limitations on what I could what I can buy. I mean, you know, as long as I can afford it. But when I buy a new shirt, one of my old shirts gets donated. Mm -hmm. um that fixes any conflict and it it place it places kind of a healthy responsible limitation on what i would buy you know right. hang on to stuff and but this fixes a conflict and i'm responsible with my closet needs but this yeah. kind of helps with decision making uh procrastination it makes me resilient against getting stuck and unable to make a decision because yes. if I was like, I don't have a shirt to get rid of. Well, then don't get a new shirt. It, it, I mean, it 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 gives you a, a test where you're not making decisions just without thinking through them. But right. um, I've implemented a process and this kind of thing works this exact same way in business. But there's mindsets, issues around self-doubt. Right. Um, that's, that's often mixed with the negative self-talk. But this is where we get our limiting beliefs. And this, I think, also where our need for positivity and self-esteem comes from. Um, yeah. But there's fear and anxiety is a huge one. That's like, I don't know. But this is where we have that need to stop overthinking or manage stress or uh, getting overwhelmed. That yeah. There's... Uh, I think that's where the roots of procrastinating are, but there's goal setting and achievement. I mean, we've got to be able to see our true worth. Yeah. That and, and adopt the growth mindset. There's, there's mindset issues around relationships. There's mindset issues around work-life balance. Um, there, there's a bunch of different types of mindset, but none of them are really bad or good. They're just yours. And you can change your mindset and have a new perspective. Um, but that takes a little bit of work. Right. So you want to make sure, can I manage this <laughs> mindset that I currently have and still have the success I want or not? Um, right. In some cases, the answer is yes. Some cases, the answer is no. But it it's being honest. I mean, you can you can, you can lie to your family, you can lie to your friends, but when you're lying to yourself, it's it's not helpful. It's yeah. Never. There's never a reason to do that. Um, but when I work with entrepreneurs, I want to know their purpose right Where did you start this business mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure early on there were a lot of there was a lot of evidence that this was a bad idea or <laughs> this was right. a you should not have done this why what you know what's the purpose of the business what's your purpose in having the business you know what do you want how do you, right. how do you define growth and how how can you tell if you grew right um, i mean podcasting right i I, I do podcast. I'm haven't done it long, but I'm already mortally embarrassed of my first one. Gosh, it was horrible. Gosh, I, I I I can't believe I still have that out there on the internet. Um, <laughs> but I love it because I can watch it 
and see actual tangible evidence growth. You can know you grow if you can if you have some kind of way to measure it. Right. Um, and then once you know the why, you know what you want, you know how to define growth. I want to know what your goals are, personal, professional, financial. Um, were they easy to achieve? Or why haven't you achieved them? Because usually if you have all your goals are achieved, well, they weren't that much of a stretch. Yeah. And if you never achieve them, maybe you need some less stretchy goals to build up to what you're trying to achieve. But um, I want to know if they're smart enough. How specific are we? Do do we have, um, do we know, you know, can we measure them? Is there a time limit? Right. I argue that that someday is never, and any any a goal is just simply a wish with a deadline. Yeah, and um, but are they audacious enough? Um, and do they motivate you? Right. That's that's where it kind of we start talking about that second M, which is motivation. Yes. Uh, I think most of us, uh, I've heard it called different things, but we all have that reptilian brain that that's it exists to protect us it's more of our instincts it's not how we communicate or think or show empathy or any of those things it's just keeping ourselves alive and yes. you know everybody wants things to get better nobody wants things to change right change is bad to the reptilian brain the status quo is what's important well if you stay in the status quo and you don't change anything it is absolutely physically impossible to grow at all in that state right so you have to first win that argument internally with your reptilian brain so that you can stretch yourself that you can try something that you don't already know the results of. yes and because growth doesn't happen where you're safe if you're safe you're not growing but you're safe mm -hmm. and there's there's a trade-off there but growth really happens when we put ourselves out there yes uh, but so if you're scared, pay attention to being scared, pay attention to why you're scared, but do it scared. <laughs> don't, don't not do it because you're scared unless your goal is not to grow. And if you're one of those people who has absolutely no ambition in growing in any way whatsoever, you're not going to get along with me anyway. So <laughs> we should, the, the, the conversation would probably be best to stop there. Right. But once we have goals that, that track with our purpose and, and they, I don't know, they they make sense. Um, we can create a plan. Yeah. But that's that's to me, that's like that's like the segue into the motivation because the goals are motivating. Um uh I learned and I still kind of sort of don't believe it, but I've learned it already. <laughs> Money right. does not motivate us. Mm -hmm. It does, in a sense, I have bills to pay. I like to get paid for work I do so that I can, you know, keep my house and eat food and, and stuff. But the motivation of money for bare necessities is not motivating. It's a responsibility obligation type thing. Yeah. It motivates people. I mean, when you think about goals, it's, you know, it's be, do, have. What do you want to have? You know, right. Uh, who do you want to be? Where do you want to go? Um, what do you want to do? That those things are motivating. You know, we look forward to a family vacation somewhere. We look forward to trading in an old car and getting a new, much nicer car. Or we look forward to, you know, moving into a bigger house or, or our first house or whatever. Those kind of things are, are motivational. The money isn't. Right. I found that it isn't, or it isn't strong enough. You know, it's it's like having a job. When you have a job, your employer pays you the least amount they can with so that you don't quit. <laughs> and mm -hmm. as an employee, you work the least amount you have to not get fired. Yes. Whereas you have, when you're an employee or when you're one of those people who have employees who actually show ownership and they're trying yes. to do everything they possibly can, that's where you really strike gold. And that right. kind of fits into this motivation because I work with business owners and I work with figuring out their goals and creating a plan based on the goals. But once yeah. we're through with all that, they're like, well, I care this much, but my employees don't. So it's like, well, you just learned how to set goals. 
and you just learn how to turn goals into a, a plan because right. you, this business you own as the way to have the stuff that you want. Right. So what are your employees goals? And most of the time they have no idea. And I've worked places. It's, and I work in sales where goals are something. There's goals exercise all the time. But if an employee were to get asked about their goals by their boss and their boss helping them, you know, challenging them on the goals, making them specific and measurable and attainable. And then finding out exactly what the employee would need to do in order to have what they want. Right. Showing that level of interest would probably be a first as a business owner that you could do for your employees. But if you're successful through that exercise of getting the employee to see, hey, working here and accomplishing these KPIs or targets or commissions or whatever, yeah, I have the Corvette I want, or I can go on that trip to Greece that I want to go on, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Once, once your employees see your business the way you see it, and it's a vehicle to get what they want, they have ownership. That turns C employees into B plus, A minus employees, just that yeah. ownership alone. And you start working as a team, of, you know, they're not owners, they don't own your company, but they have ownership in it and they have pride in it and they they want it to succeed. They're not saying, yeah, this isn't in my job description. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's 501. I, I, I got to leave. You know, when you have people who have ownership, they get jobs done. Yeah. They're, they're like, oh, we're still here and it's 630. They're not freaking out about that. They, they're they there on their own volition because something needs to get done and they understand it the same way the owner does. That's that's what I mean about they've got that motivation. Yeah. But when we build the plan and the plan for the business and in the budget, budgets are important. We got to pay for stuff. But when all the strategical and tactical plans, when they're all based on the owner's goals, yeah, the actual plan, the budget, the metrics, the conversions, the percentage, everything motivates the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to tell the story because I'm proud of it, but I, I, <laughs> I tell it a lot. When I was young, I was, I was, I was an athlete. I played, played baseball and stuff. I was really, really fast. That was my, my thing. I was faster than everybody else. Uh, I ran a 4.4 second 40 yard dash. And wow. I, I don't know if it was that fast, but it was clocked and it got written down. So I'm taking it. Yeah. Now, knowing what I know about adults and people and people who coach in high schools, I think that coach may have been drinking that day. <laughs> My 17 year old self wasn't aware that much, but I think now in hindsight, he wasn't all that into it, but it, I'm, I'm taking it because it got written down, but I was, right. I was 17. I'm 53 now. Right. I, I don't think I could run 4.4 second even liberally timed 40 yard dash right i mean yeah. why would i can you think of anything more sad than men in their 50s running a 40 yard dash i mean oh my god you're gonna hurt yourself you're gonna fall down what if you break your hip what with your back don't your back hurt yeah <laughs> there's no track meets um there's no you know even if i would get talked into going and playing in a softball game i'm not sliding or stealing a base and if the ball's right. over my head i'll get to it eventually i'm not right i'm not gonna kill myself for this to play a game yeah. um it was different when we were 17. however if we're in the woods and i see a bear running directly at me even though i think i've heard that the best thing to do is not run from a bear right i'm gonna run and <laughs> i might come close to that 4.4 because mm -hmm. i'm not worried about my lower back i'm not worried about what i look like i'm not worried about injuring myself because I'm properly motivated to run as fast right. as I can. That level of motivation is what I'm talking about. It's almost like the, the zone of motivation. That's why it's important to know, know what your purpose is. Yeah. Know what your mindset is. Mm -hmm. Have goals that track with the purpose that you figured out some way to um, 
negotiate with the mindset so that the, the goals can actually happen. And then the goals are what built your plan for your business. So right. when you get to the third M, which is mastery, that's where you're able to be accountable to the plan, which right. is goals, right? So, and when I say mastery, I'm talking about, I said it in opening, it's an enlightened existence. We, yeah. we are accountable to everything that, that happens. If we say we're going to do 10 in a week and we do five, that means next week is 15. Right. We'll just wipe the slate clean and go start for 10 the next. We, we, we own and we're accountable to the results because right. we can't be sure. But it's it's an amazing realization that you can hold yourself accountable. It's, right. It's doable. It's possible. It can happen. But it's never something where you can simply sw- flip a switch. Yeah. All of a sudden, I'm accountable to all my goals. I don't care how good they are. Right. Uh, life happens. We can yeah. write down the best plan in the world, but if it's a 12 month plan and we haven't changed it multiple times between today and 12 months from now, I would argue that we're not living that plan very well <laughs> because right. it happened. The, the purpose is to have a baseline, to have something. If you've got to change your plan, yeah, that's fine. As long as you have something important and solid and meaningful to change from. Right. Uh, otherwise, you're just throwing ideas against the wall to see what sticks. And an entrepreneur is intimately involved with all the different parts of the business. Right. Not just new ideas or not just the the production. Um, and that's that's an issue with entrepreneurs. You didn't create a business so that you could be a replaceable cog in that wheel. You created right. that just to fill a need you know, implement your vision, all, yeah. all of those things. That's why you became an entrepreneur. That's why you right. did all this stuff. Um, so the secret to mastery, at least in the interim, is to have some sort of accountability partner. Right. This happens. I, I sometimes advise against it, but I've I've also worked with like married couples that have a business together. That 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 can work. And the reason it can work is if the two parties will agree to honestly be each other's accountability partner. Right. If, if you could do that, I mean, if you could build each other up, not tear each other down, I mean, that's, that's, that's the reason not to go into business with a, with a, with a spouse or whatever, because I mean, there was a, it was a joke, but there was a sign on a, a office I worked in a long time. It was a, somebody, you know those motivational posters where it was like yes. where, where it was a picture, a big giant picture of a, a hand breaking a pencil in half. And it <laughs> said um frustration was the word. <laughs> and at the bottom it said, Don't take your don't take it out on your coworkers. That's what your family is for. <laughs> <laughs> and it stuck with me. I mean, it's a horrible thing to say, but it, it stuck with yeah. me because if if you don't, I know a lot of people, they leave work to go be with their families and to get away from their job. Right. A a lot of people, some of the same people that do that, go to work to leave, (laughs) to escape their family, (laughs) to go to, to be with their employee, with their employees or their coworkers or whatever. Yeah. Um, I live in an area that's got a lot of oil fields. A lot of people work offshore. And sometimes you can work for a month straight. And you're home yeah. for a month straight. Well, I've right. seen these type of seven and seven, 14, 30 and 30. That kind of has helped marriages last way longer than they would have otherwise. Because right. when someone's home all day, every day for 30 straight days, it's time for them to go. Yeah. And they're probably ready to go. <laughs> right. But after they haven't been there for 30 days, you know, and you got to open your stuck jars yourself and you got to, you know, kill the spider yourself and you got to do all the kind of stuff that that person does. Yeah. You're happy that they're back. So yeah. you're happy to see them go and you're happy to see them come home. And this happens on a smaller scale with, with daily work. But when you work together and you, your entrepreneur is possibly working together from home, there's no escape. Yeah. So it's very important to be aware of 
mindset issues. It's very important to be aware of the goals. It's very important to be aware of each other's purpose. Sometimes yeah. it's not the same. I mean, they could cohabit, you know, you could have two uh, complementary purposes, um, but you get into problems when the goals are different. Like his five-year goal might be to sell this business and move to Mexico. Her five-year goal might be to triple this business and expand into 14 cities and involve the children in the business. Right. That's probably a conversation that needs to happen. And that's why I start at the beginning. I want to know the goals. I want to know who's inv involved. I want to know what what's the, why are you doing this? You know, in yeah. a lot of cases, especially early on, you could be doing way better financially with much less work by working for someone else. What's mm -hmm. driving this? You know, is are you playing the long game? Are you lazy or you do you feel like your skills are what's what's driving you and you want to be honest about that but yeah. once you've got someone who knows and understands your why and your goals and they there's someone they can hold you accountable to your plan your budget right. and your pivots and stuff until accountability basically becomes a habit yeah when it's a habit that's where the magic happens and that's where I've seen it. It's it's not a problem. Yeah. You don't need the help anymore. Now, I would argue that this is probably a good time to expand because you don't need help. You've gotten to one level. Okay, <laughs> new level, new devil. <laughs> what, what are we going to be dealing with now? But right. that to me is mastery. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's a cycle. You start out, you want to know why, then it turns into goals. We have some, you know, back and forth with the mindset or the mindset issues or the mindset tweaks or those kind of things um, and understand what the limitations are. You know, right. a lot of entrepreneurs, they could be a whole lot more expansive and growth minded if they had way more time and money. Right. But the, you want to know the reality of your situation. This is what I have. This is what I can do. Yes. So the more I improve, the bigger, you know, my marketing budget gets. Right. Yeah, the bigger the marketing budget gets, the more customers I can attract. The more customers I can attract, the more revenue I'm going to get. But it's not all going to me because it's going to be more work to do. I'm going to be hiring more people. You know, so there, there needs to be a plan that anticipates the growth. You know, heaven yeah. forbid this marketing works, then what? Right. You know, if you're a, you know, a pie maker and you're making pies, you can make a hundred pies a day and your marketing gets you a 10,000 pie order. Mm -hmm. Do you say no? Right. Most people don't, but even given the limitation of how many pies you could possibly make, but I, pref there's going to be problems and I prefer the problems that come with money, like too much business, than yeah. the that come with no money, like not enough business. But right. I've had people with a straight face say, I don't want more business because I'm will have to get a bigger office or I'll have to hire someone. And it's scary. Yeah. And you know, but those types of conversations lets us know it's like a thermometer for the mindset. Okay. Yeah. A fear, a fear of hiring someone because it's a huge responsibility, especially right. if it's like a law firm. I work in law firms a lot and you're hiring somebody that makes six figures. Yeah. So you're not just in, you're just not responsible for yourself. You know, I can eat ramen noodles and sleep in my car. <laughs> but I recruited this $150,000 hotshot lawyer and she's not willing to do that. Because she's not the entrepreneur. She's here to perform the service that I need to go and, and bill for and bring clients into for. So yeah. that's, you know, that can add, some people are scared of the stress. Some people are scared, you know, they know it. They know their numbers. They have a business plan. They know I'm going to pay this person $100,000, but they're going to bring in 300000 or whatever the ratio is. Mm -hmm. They know that still scared <laughs> it's still fear and i argue like i said do it scared right or don't grow it's the growth doesn't happen if you if you're always playing it safe i don't mm -hmm. gamble safe scared money doesn't make money right
Sometimes you double down. Sometimes you raise the pot. Sometimes you, 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 the, you know, the more, the bigger the risk, the bigger reward. Right. But risks are risks are risks. That's what's good about having a plan because if you have a plan, you can mitigate the risks. You can, you can hedge your bet, so to speak, or you can have contingencies and backup plans and, and um, workarounds and things that can happen. And you can, as yes. you build a team, if you're a good leader, you're getting ideas and, and, and solutions from your team. It's not just right. from the top down, but that's the three M's. It's mindset, motivation, and mastery. It's actually mindset, motivation, accountability, but I like having three M's. So mastery is where I turned it into account. I turned accountability into mastery. I love it. Now, if you had to summarize everything we talked about today, what are some of the things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners about the three M's and about the conversation that we've had? Because you touched base on a lot of things today. Right. Well, it, it, it begins at the beginning, starts at the beginning. It's we start with the mindset. We start with the purpose. We start with the why that turns into the goals. Can't skip that. Everybody wants to skip that. Not everybody, but a lot of people want to skip that. Oh, I already know my goals. I already went, I did a goals exercise at, on a workshop on LinkedIn. I, I know, how, I don't care. If you're working with me, we're going to do it again. Now we might yeah. be able to do it quickly. If you have, you know, really advanced, well thought through goals, um, if you have a really comprehensive business plan. Um, yeah. But even the best ones I've ever seen still didn't have an answer for one or two, you know, things. And we want to make sure those are all answered because all of that is the foundation. So you got to, you got to do the three M's in order. You can't be the master first. Yes. Uh, but um, once you, once you dealt with the, with the mindset and you've created your goals and you've gotten into the process of making it, making your plan to where you're looking at the future and you're planning for success. Motivation is possible because you built it on your goals and accountability is often necessary. And, and when I say accountability like that, I mean, from the outside, having an accountability partner and it's going to require trust. Yes. There are some people who are entrepreneurs because they don't trust bosses. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. trust issues from the onset. We got to deal with that. We're not going to necessarily fix it. Um, but awareness, awareness of your mindset, all that stuff is on is early on. Yes. I know myself. I know that I get distracted. I have horrible ADHD sometimes, but that's mm -hmm. okay. I know that's happening. I don't ever go into a... a, a a conversation without some sort of outlines. <laughs> I, I, I think ahead of times because I want to stay on task. I want to stay on track. Um, but managing that, I might get two hours out of each day more than everybody else. Right. Because I have, you know, it, it stops being a disorder. It starts being a superpower. But if I don't manage it, I'll start 50,000 projects and not finish any of them. Yes. And my wife loves that. <laughs> she loves mm -hmm. it. <laughs> I'm kidding. But but if you've ever been around people with ADD, they do that. Well, the first step is awareness and knowing what it is and managing it. I'm not going to fix it. But right. the more you embrace your mindsets, the less you see them as, as something to overcome, as something that you can leverage for something else. Right. Um, I mean, people who are like hopelessly suspicious of everyone else, embrace that. Become a private investigator. Go work at the police department. Yeah. You know, I would probably not be a relationship counselor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mindsets. Understand. <clears throat> understand everything is a gift. It just depends on how you look at it. Exactly. And that's start there. And that's foundational. But the motivation necessary and the accountability. No one's them accountable to it. They're not holding themselves accountable to it. They just really, at the end of the year, our goals were not met. Right. Well, when you have an accountability partner and you made, you, let's say you made a business plan for the calendar year, you know in February where you are right. <laughs> based on 
what happened? Did we get our financials for January? Right. All the sense of the plan that we were holding ourselves accountable to. Did we win? Where were we? Of where we, you know, you you create a plan. It's not, you're not going to hit it, but it's going to be a baseline. Are we over? Are we under? Where do we start from? We might find after a quarter that our plan was a little low. We're going to hit our revenue goals in June. Maybe we should push ourselves a little more. Or right. yeah, we're probably not going to do half of what we put in our plan. Right. Either make whatever investments are necessary to ramp up productivity and marketing, or we figure out how to make half as much profitable. Right. And grow at a at a pace that we can handle. But you need a plan. It needs to be based on your goals. Your goals need to track with your why. You need awareness of that, of the mindset. But if you do it, and if you do it the right way, motivation's easy. What I call proper motivation. Mm -hmm. Goals motivate us. And uh, the accountability is basically, I see it like a coach. A coach is reminding you, say, okay, do you want to tell your spouse that you're going to Jersey Shore for a long weekend instead of two weeks in Greece with the helicopter and the villa on the Mediterranean? Mm -hmm. You don't have that conversation. N nobody does. So what happens instead? You don't have that bad quarter. You're right. motivated. It's the same way as running fast when you're old. It, it just, it all works together, but it's, it, to be an entrepreneur, to be successful, know why you're doing it. I've talked to people in the why section. And the outcome of that conversation was, I need to go back and work for somebody else. I'm not yeah. an entrepreneur. I'm not willing to do all of these things. And that's fine. Most people aren't. Yeah. True entrepreneurs, it's not necessarily a blessing. I mean, it's a blessing when you have an idea and a, and a company and, a, and, a, and something to do, but I know true entrepreneurs who are stuck in cubicles and they can't quit. They, they're stuck in a job. It's a toxic hell for them. Yeah. But and when I see people that own businesses, even if they're successful, there's certain characteristical things that I pick up on. Like they speak of their business, like they speak of their children. Mm -hmm. That uh, entrepreneur, they don't care if they own a law firm or a whorehouse. It doesn't matter. It's just a business. I'm putting money and time into it and more money and time is coming out of it. Whatever the business is, it doesn't matter. That's a true entrepreneur. Yeah. They may have standards and, and a code, but it, it, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, when, when the owner of a restaurant is also the chef, that's really hard to overcome. Unless they bring in a, 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 a you know, chief operating officer to run that business. Um, yeah. They're too, you know, they will overspend, you know, they'll spend 10 times more money to increase the, the quality of the product 1%. Mm -hmm. And while you don't want to cut corners, you're trying to create a work of art and you're treating the business like a child, like one of your children. And it's really hard to be profitable. It's yeah. not necessarily an entrepreneur. And I know some chefs who are entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and they've opened um sushi restaurants and steak restaurants and themed restaurants and 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 diners and i mean just it doesn't matter but they are a chef right but they're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. um that they, they, they realize that the actual cooking is a task you hire someone else to do right if if it's dependent on you your business isn't sustainable because what happens is something happens to you. There's no more business. Right. Go on vacation. How many small business owners do you know that have not been on a vacation in years? Right. Because the second they stop working, the business dies. Mm -hmm. They're probably not entrepreneurs. They're stuck. They got a job. They're working. Yeah. The job owns their time. Right. And that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. You take control of your time. Exactly. But it, it's, it's, Mindset, motivation, and mastery, but in that order. <laughs> I like it. Now, what kind of services do you provide? Well, um, the main thing that I do when I work with, with business owners is we work to create a business plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I've simplified the process because I, I, I'm, I'm a simplifier, not a complicator. I know that things are more likely to be implemented if they're simple. Yeah. I mean, they're easy, but they're simple. 
uh, we work to get an awareness of the numbers, awareness of the obstacles, and and prioritize uh, what boulders do we move first? What right. what's in our way? What's where are the biggest opportunities? Um, where are we winning currently? Can we enhance that to help finance the fixing where we're losing? Right. Or, um, so then I work with them and I create a business plan. And once the business plan is created, we make a matching budget. And so we have a business plan and a budget and it's really, really, it gets down to percentages. For example, if, if you know, you need 10 customers in a month, right? How many leads does it take to get someone to set up an appointment? Right. How many appointments need to be set to get someone to show up? Right. How many appointments showing up result in people signing and engaging and being your client? And of the ones who sign and engage and be your client, how many of them pay on time and in full? Right. So if you need 10 people to pay on time and in full and it takes 10 leads to get six appointments, you got to set six appointments to get five to show up. You get five to show up to get three to, to sign and three to sign means two are going to pay. Well, Two paid took a hundred leads, but if right. you, need 10, you need 500 leads, right? That's okay. 500 leads will get you your 10 customers who paid. You want to know what that number is. You don't want to tell your marketing people that I need a hundred leads because right. I closed 10% of every lead. Well, it's not entirely accurate. Knowing right. your numbers is it's in it. And that's a big mindset thing, but that's what I do with them. I get them. I, 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 I find the different issues, the, the different things that are holding them back. We address them. We acknowledge them. We, we we either put them into our process or we work on overcoming them. But we create a business plan. We simplify the process. And I, I meet with them once a week. And I hold them accountable to the plan because I know how to motivate them. I force them to bear their souls and tell me what their goals are. There's no right. judgment care i mean i'm sure most of my clients and people who've worked with me probably would think my goals and the things i want are ridiculous but it doesn't matter they're personal and they motivate me so as long as i figure that out i can hold them accountable and so we execute the plan so it's a it's a strategic mindset setup and then we execute the plan um and i hold them accountable and because of the process that we go through all these steps I don't, people will, will advertise, oh, 10 X growth. Yeah. Well, maybe if you did $50 last year, you know, we could have 10 X growth, <laughs> but I usually deal with people who are, you know, 500,000 and above, maybe over a million dollars, small businesses, but there's a substantial amount of money. There's banks involved. There's a CPA. It's, it's not a, a true, true, you know, bootstrap zero money startup. Right. My clients grow. 50 to 60 percent every single year and that's that's significant when you're talking about a million dollars because what's really important is whatever percentage of the top end revenue that you get to keep that right. doesn't change sharply it's it's pretty glacial if, if you're getting 20 percent of a million dollars probably getting 20 percent of two million dollars because you're a different company at $2 million. You're a bigger office. You have more employees. You have more expenses. It, it, it yeah. grows. It might go to 19 or it might go to 21, but it's not going to 50 or 10. So right. you plan for that. So when you grow by 60%, that means that net income to the owner grows by 60%. Right. So if you made 100,000 last year, you're going to grow by, you're going to make 150. Mm-hmm. 160, you know, I, I don't like to do math in front of people. I feel like I'm slow with it, but mm. whatever you earn, if you increase that by 50 or 60%, it does create some upgrades, but then you realize we're going to do that again the, the following year, which means you've more than doubled in two years. Right. Your life is different with you if you double your income. Oh, yeah. And you, and you don't have to look at that as being greedy because the bigger your income, the more able you are to do things, cool things like donate money to a school or a church or or, or volunteer your time or, or or do work for free for people. Yeah. So people get they they mess up and they do that first. 
And then they end up with a bunch of clients that aren't paying them and they're, they feel good about what they're doing, but they have to stop. And so they can't help anybody. So it's the paying customers that can help you offer services to people who can't afford it. Um, That puts the profit thing in perspective, but profit is profit. If, if I pay you for a service, I value the service more than the money that I gave you. Right. But you get the profit because you get more money than it costs to deliver the service. It, it's it's a win-win. My grandfather used to, he was, he was the businessman in our family. He, he had a bank. He was a vice president of a bank. But he was, it was a big bank. It was an important job. And he used to say, when you're negotiating, you know it was a good deal when both parties think they screwed over the other party. <laughs> They're both walking away from the table thinking, oh, played him like a fiddle. <laughs> that's when you know it was a good deal when both people like the buyer's like and i really would have paid more and the seller's like can't believe they paid that much you know that's that's when it's good i don't necessarily like putting it in that negative sense but it works and it makes sense but when yeah. all parties are happy and everybody gets what they want that's a deal then that's profit and it's profit on both sides right exactly talked about mindset issues there's a mindset issue with profit. Some people are like, I only paid $50 for this and I'm selling it for a thousand. It's like, okay, how many hours did you work? About 12. Okay. How many years did you have to go to college before you could actually legally do the service? How much did that cost? You know, you it's not just the time. It's that story. Okay. He put an X on a, on a, on a pipe. He said, uh, $10,000, 75 cents to write the X, you know, $9,999 and 25 cents to know where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> That's profit is okay. And I've worked with a lot of people that needed to be able to say that <laughs> yes. you can't yeah, be, we- you can't be an entrepreneur if you're not mindful to making a profit. No, definitely not. Now, where can people find you? Uh, sure. My, my website, lawfamilia.net my company is lawfamilia i do coaching and fractional co services and a bunch of other things um there's a link on my website to get on my calendar uh i will anyone who wants i'll do a one-hour coaching call where i kind of go through the basics of what they would need to do to make a business plan and if if the people are really really smart and they have a lot of free time and they get it and they they're they're gung-ho they can take the information I give on that free call, because I don't hold anything back. They can go right. create their business plan and hold themselves accountable. And I would be stoked to learn that that happened. That would that would make my day. Yeah. The reality is I'm expecting some of the people that I talk to are going to say, are going to see this is something that I need to do. This is something that can improve things. Right. And then some of those people are going to say, I know myself. I know right. I start out really well but it's we're gonna fizz out i need that accountability and i do both like i don't do accountability coaching to people who don't have a business plan right and i i don't see the point in making a business plan for someone if i'm not going to hold them accountable to it right like they're they're two things but they're both required yes and i'm also very very active on linkedin i um i uh i spend a lot of time posting a lot of content i uh I have a podcast called Inappropriate Growth. Mm-hmm. Always looking for interesting guests. You know, I love stories about how businesses started. Like yeah. not, the, not the successful cool part now. I'm I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in when you slept in the car, you, you ate ramen noodles, it destroyed your relationships. You know, yeah. you, know you thought you'd made a huge mistake. Right. That's to me more useful. Yeah. Because I run into people who are starting an entrepreneurial journey and they're willing to do whatever it takes, but their expectations, they're comparing themselves to someone else, which is always a bad idea, but it's especially a bad idea for a brand new entrepreneur to compare themselves to someone who's been doing it for 20 years. Exactly. Chapter one and happily ever after is never the same part of the story. No, definitely not. There's a lot of stuff that happens from the beginning and before the end. Oh yeah. 
This has been amazing, Paul. I, I really enjoyed this session. This has been a, 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 an amazing podcast. I really enjoyed learning about the three M's and really putting them to usage and putting them into action. Because I think a lot of people, you know, have to understand their steps in, in order to reach success. And you've really made that clear today. So I really appreciate the, this session. I look forward to our next session, to, you know, and th this has been amazing. I love it. Thank Happy you. Happy This is fun. I love, I'm not, I love talking, but I, I love talking more when there's something substantial to say. And oh, yeah. I'm going to get something. Sure. But all this stuff, it excites me. It's important to me. And it works. It's why I do it. Because nothing gets me more excited than to make these implementations, have this accountability and see that growth. Exactly. And sometimes people just need a few tweaks and they can just skyrocket. And it's just understanding where their their floors are and where, where they have to tweak it up and change it up. And, you know, things can happen fast. So it's people like you who really help people, you know, help change lives. So thank you. Well, I love doing it. I appreciate it. All right. I, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. You have a great day. Too.